While King Denis I is often hailed as one of the exemplary rulers in the history of Portugal, overseeing what could be considered a golden age for the country, his reign was not devoid of the challenges that plagued other Portuguese monarchs. Since the passing of King Sancho I in 1211, issues arose due to the controversial testaments of each preceding monarch. Also, in the case of Dinish, his rule came to a tumultuous end just one year after a civil war where he confronted his son, Afonso. The conflict stemmed from Afonso's resentment towards the land grants and positions bestowed upon his half-brother, Afonso Sanche, a bastard son of Dinish. Although the civil war concluded in 1324 and Dinish passed away in 1325, this did not bring an end to the animosity between his sons. The subsequent ruler, Afonso IV, embarked on a very martial reign, drawing inspiration from the first Afonso who governed Portugal. His military exploits not only showcased his valor but also played a crucial role in securing the continuity of Christian Iberian Peninsula. Furthermore, Afonso IV's kingship coincided with the devastating Black Plague in Portugal and marked the exploration of new lands thousands of kilometers to the south by Portuguese ships. Additionally, his reign is remembered for one of the most renowned court episodes in the history of medieval Europe, culminating in a tragic outcome. King Afonso IV, born on the 8th of February 1291, ascended to the throne of Portugal in 1325, at the age of 33. As I discussed in my video about Dinis, Afonso IV's deep-seated animosity towards his half-brother, Afonso Sanche, persisted. Consequently, in 1325, following his official recognition as the new King of Portugal in the Royal Commissions of Évora, Afonso IV branded Afonso Sanche his estranged brother as a traitor to Portugal. Afonso Sanche had already sought refuge in Castile during the conflicts involving his legitimate brother and father, abandoning the Kingdom of Portugal. Afonso IV proceeded to seize all the lands and titles bequeathed to Afonso Sanche by their father, Dinis. In Albuquerque, Castile, Afonso Sanche attempted to negotiate with his brother, urging him to honor their father's testament. However, Afonso IV remained resolute in his refusal. Subsequently, Afonso Sanche invaded Portugal in 1325, launching raids on Alentejo and Trás-os-Montes, inflicting damage through burning, looting and causing harm to various crown properties. Notably, in Ogela, the illegitimate son of Dinis achieved a victory over a Portuguese army, prompting Afonso IV to retaliate by invading Castile and raiding Cudseira. Finally, in 1328, after reading his mother's pleas for an end to the conflict, Afonso IV ceased hostilities by conceding to his brother what rightfully belonged to him. Unfortunately, Afonso Sancho reclaimed titles and properties were not held for long, as he met his demise in the same year during the siege in Castile, led by Alfonso XI. Despite King Afonso IV's reconciliation with Afonso Sanche, another brother of his and influential figure in the court of Dinis, João Afonso, did not fare as well, facing execution in 1325. Ironically, a year later, Afonso IV implemented a prohibition on private vengeance between noblemen as a means of quelling conflicts within families. In 1326, Afonso IV took a step towards establishing stability in the borders by signing the Treaty of Escalona with Castile, aiming to ensure peace between the two crowns. Subsequently, in 1330, he instituted the Juiz de Fora, or judges nominated by the king, intended to be impartial arbiters in disputes involving people from specific localities. Throughout the 1330s, Afonso devoted himself to regulating the activities of the Corregidores 
or magistrates who held the authority to rectify judgments as they saw fit. During these years, there was a clear emphasis on legal matters, with Afonso striving to consolidate power by placing his trusted lawmen in more locations than ever before. In 1334, Afonso took a significant step by issuing a general call to all lords of the kingdom holding jurisdictions to validate their rights. The centralization of power initially demonstrated by Afonso II and heavily invested in by the niche appeared to be a path followed by their successor, Afonso IV. In the year 1336, as King Afonso IV's reign prioritized the development of a formidable navy to counter Muslim invasions and conduct offensive actions, a tradition initiated during the time of the Inish, Portugal achieved unprecedented exploration further south. Portuguese and Genoese sailors, financed by the Crown, ventured to the Canary Islands of the North African coast. Lanzarote Malocello, guided by knowledge from previous merchants and sailors, landed on the island subsequently named Lanzarote. In 1341, King Afonso IV launched a new expedition, consisting of three ships led by the Florentine Tegiad Corbizzi, the Genoese Nicoloso da Recco, and an individual whose name has been lost to history. The diverse crew included Portuguese, Castilians and Italians, with the primary objective of revisiting Lanzarote. The expedition, primarily a reconnaissance mission, revealed a land abundant in cereals, water, fruits and trees. Despite bringing back minimal items such as redwood and animal skins, the venture contributed to Portugal's expanding knowledge. However, Portugal faced the setback when the Castilian man, Dom Luís Lacerda, residing close to the papacy in Avignon and serving as an admiral and ambassador for King Philip VI of France, sought the Pope's permission to claim the islands for converting the natives to Catholicism. Lacerda even requested a Portuguese crew and ships from King Afonso IV for this purpose. In response, the Portuguese monarch contested the perceived injustice, asserting Portugal's right to the islands as the discoverer. Despite Afonso IV's efforts, Pope Clement VI granted Castile the rights to the North African islands. Nevertheless, in 1345, Afonso IV received compensation in the form of the clergy's taxes in this kingdom for a two-year period. During the reign of the Castilian king Alfonso XI, a rebellion erupted among his nobles. For reasons that remain unclear to this day, Afonso IV of Portugal decided to support the rebellious aristocracy. In response, Alfonso XI launched a new war against Portugal in 1336. The Portuguese land army initiated their offensive, first reaching Badajoz and then advancing further south to Almendral, Vila Nova de Barcarrota, Cortegena and Aracena. The Portuguese forces then turned west, attacking Aroche, before returning to Portugal. The conflict also unfolded at sea, with a fleet departing from Lisbon and reaching as far as Lep. In 1337, the Castilians retaliated, launching their offensive from Badajoz to target Elvas, Arronches, Veiros, Vila Viçosa, Olivença, and eventually returning to Badajoz. During the same year, another campaign was initiated by Alfonso XI, departing from San Lucar and detecting territories in the far southwestern region of Portugal. The war continued into 1338, when the conflict came to an end. An imminent Muslim invasion from North Africa that poised to bring a large army and potentially conquer the entire Iberian Peninsula prompted Latin Christendom's unified response. The crowns of Portugal and Castile would thus join forces against the Marinid Sultanate. While Portugal experienced some defeats, including the significant Battle of Farrubilhas in 1337, 
Afonso IV achieved certain objectives. This included Alfonso XI's promise to treat his Portuguese wife, the daughter of Afonso IV, well. Additionally, Afonso IV successfully brought Constança, the future wife of his son and former wife of Alfonso XI, to Portugal. Historians commonly divide the Reconquista into three distinct phases. The initial phase, spanning from the 8th to the 11th century, is characterized by Islamic hegemony. The second phase, occurring from the 11th to the 13th century, witnesses a power equilibrium. The third and final phase, commencing in the 13th century, is marked by Christian supremacy and notable conquests by Christian kingdoms, notably after the pivotal battle of Las Navas de Tolosa. However, the Islamic threat persisted beyond this point. In 1339, the Prince of Granada seized control of Gibraltar, launching numerous raids against Castile. Alfonso XI eventually defeated him in Xerez de la Frontera. Yet, a year later, the King of Fez sought vengeance for the Islamic defeat and ordered a fleet of 100 ships to attack Castile. This naval force was victorious against Castile, in the Strait of Gibraltar. Fearing the impending land invasion, Alfonso XI urgently sought aid from Portugal and Genoa. It is suggested that Alfonso IV's daughter, the wife of Alfonso XI, played a role in urging her father to support Castile. While this is plausible, it is also likely that Alfonso IV recognized the broader threat to the entire Iberian Peninsula posed by a dangerous marinid invasion. The Portuguese army swiftly marched to Tarifa, which was under siege by the North Africans and the Kingdom of Granada. Simultaneously, Portuguese ships sailed from Lisbon to reinforce the Castilian fleece in Gibraltar. The decisive battle unfolded near the Salado River, resulting in one of the most impactful Christian victories in the history of the Reconquista. Chroniclers present at the battle underscored the importance of the King of Portugal, acknowledging his military valor and depicting him as a distinguished knight who refused the gold that had been abandoned by the Sultan upon his retreat. His unwavering focus was on the paramount goal, the defense of Christendom. This was the last Muslim invasion of the Iberian Peninsula. Despite the success of Afonso IV's rule thus far, Portugal faced significant challenges in the 1340s. In 1343, a shortage of cereals and fruits led to a substantial increase in prices, resulting in several deaths, as people didn't have enough money to buy food. The severity of the situation escalated to the point where churches could no longer accommodate the deceased. Additionally, in 1347, a major earthquake in Coimbra further exacerbated economic woes throughout the kingdom. However, the most devastating problem that afflicted all of Europe during this period was the Black Plague. The plague reached Portugal in the spring of 1348, leaving a profound impact on the population for the ensuing years. Coastal regions of the Iberian Peninsula were particularly hard hit by the epidemic. In Afonso IV's kingdom, approximately one-third of the population succumbed to the plague, leading to a significant migration from rural areas to urban centers. By 1349, there was a shortage of labor in the agricultural sector, prompting the nobility to offer higher salaries to those who were willing to work. Despite the country being in the midst of a profound crisis, Historians note that Portugal was among the first European countries to take measures to prevent social and economic ruin. Firstly, the king ordered the examination of testaments written during the epidemic to verify their validity. Secondly, Afonso IV prohibited exploitative trade practices that took advantage of the high demand for essential products during the fear-filled times. 
Thirdly, the monarch mandated that people continue working in the same manner as before the plague, viewing the inertia of rural workers in the exorbitant salaries they were demanding as detrimental to the kingdoms as economy. To ensure productivity, Afonso IV appointed two good men, that is, local representatives, to identify the healthy population capable of working and force them to contribute to their labor. The king also forbade fit rural workers from seeking refuge in monasteries, insisting that their place was in rural areas working the land. Refusal to comply with these directives resulted in punishment and potential banishment. While some of these measures may seem stringent, they proved necessary to maintain the country's economic stability, ultimately yielding positive results as workers returned to their posts. Inês de Castro, a Castilian noblewoman and daughter of Pedro de Castro, arrived in Portugal in 1340 as part of the entourage accompanying Princess Constança, the future wife of Prince Pedro, the son of Afonso IV. Despite Pedro's initial attraction to Inês, he went on to marry Constança, and they had several children. However, Constança passed away too early, leading Pedro to develop a stronger passion for Inês. They lived together in the central and northern regions of Portugal for half a decade. Despite being given the opportunity by his father to marry Inês, Pedro declined, fearing a succession crisis for his son Fernando, and was concerned about the potential influence of the powerful Castros from Castile over Portuguese affairs. Afonso IV grew increasingly displeased with Pedro's disregard for the state of the country. The prince's action received criticisms from the court, especially in the aftermath of the plague. The situation worsened when Pedro placed Inês near the monastery of Santa Clara in Coimbra, where the body of Queen Saint Isabel, Afonso IV's mother, was interred. This scandalous move led Afonso's advisors to persuade him to have Inês killed, viewing her as a threat to Portugal's interests due to her ties to the influential Castros. Afonso IV left the decision to his advisors, and on January 7, 1355, three of them carried out the execution. Pedro, upon learning of Inês's death, was consumed by anger and sought revenge. He gathered loyal followers, attacked castles and declared war on his father, initiating a civil war, the second in Portugal's history, between father and son. Pedro even enlisted Castilian support, with noble armies attacking the northern regions of the kingdom. Despite attempting to capture Porto, Pedro was defeated by the city's archbishop and bourgeoisie. Afonso IV assembled an army and prepared to confront Pedro, but Queen Beatriz managed to prevent the confrontation, convincing her son to cease hostilities. In 1356, Pedro signed an agreement in Canavis, pledging to move past the conflict. Shortly thereafter, he swore obedience to his father in Guimarães, marking the end of the civil war between Afonso IV and Prince Pedro. Not too long after the conflict, King Afonso IV passed away in 1357, at the age of 66. He ruled the kingdom for 32 years, making significant contributions on various fronts. Undoubtedly, he proved to be a more bellic king than his father Dinis, showcasing valor, particularly notable in the pivotal Battle of Salado in 1340, a crucial moment for Latin Christendom. Afonso's legendary bravery on the battlefield became ingrained in the history of Hispania with his refusal to accept large sums of gold after the battle was over. His efforts toward the further centralization of power and the development of the legal system were pivotal, especially during the dark period of the Black Plague, where his actions were considered among the quickest and most effective in all of Europe. Afonso IV's investment in improving the navy by fostering trade and financing expeditions 
contributed significantly to the growing maritime power of Portugal. The voyages to the Canaries in 1336 and 1341 marked important steps for Portugal's expansion into the south, setting the stage for what would happen in the 15th century. <laughs>